Hey, what's up guys? And as promised, we have some uh, Pokemon TCG gameplay. Uh, I'm Mac, and I'm on the right, and uh, Tommy Surama Singh is on the left. We are both players from the Tennessee area, and uh, this is just a little fun game we were testing before Battle Roads, and I felt like I wanted to record it. I am running the new uh, Plasma Basics deck with uh, Kyrim, Thunderous, uh, Deoxys, um, and, and I tech one Lugia. And I believe he's running, uh, Big Basics, a Big Basics variant. Um, I believe that's what he's running, uh, Landorus, Bufalant, and Mewtwo. Uh, in our recent Battle Roads with these exact decks, um, I took fourth. Uh, I, I lost my first match, and I ended up winning out to, uh, to jump back into top and he actually won his first three and lost his last uh, two to drop out but he beat some um, he beat some pretty good decks I believe he had one of the uh, one of the highest uh, strengths of schedule um, in the whole tournament and he played he played pretty well with this so I do get a decent start off not the ideal start off with this deck but I will get off a turn one uh, frost spear with the chorus machine. I had the juniper a lot of good stuff away, but with the chorus machine, and I I really don't like... <laughs> uh, the way that he did it was uh, we were actually talking, and um, it's always a great idea, especially going against Plasma and against Big Basics, is if you um, don't put down a second Pokemon, or don't put down one on your bench if you don't need to because that means they'll be able to get that frost spear damage on you uh, turn one or that uh, or the uh, the hammerhead judgment on you turn one so he didn't play as his tornadoes uh, so that way I wasn't able to get the 30 on it from frost spear so I was only able to get uh, 20 on there from uh, the uh, 10 because boofer's ability reduces all damage by 20 so I was able to get uh, 10 and then 10 plus poison. And he did wake up. He fell asleep and he did wake up. Oh, I see. He wants to play the full art N. But I don't know if he's going to. Since he's going back into shuffle, I don't believe he is. Uh, he kind of has an ideal start right now for his deck. I mean, he would like. He probably would like a Landorus, but with my. Uh, with my Kyrim uh, prowling around, I don't think he really wants one. Uh, in play right now, so I guess he's just gonna, I guess he's gonna Juniper instead of the N. And we'll see what he puts down. He's making space, so I believe he is gonna put down another basic. Um, let's see if he puts down a Landorus, or I think I see another Mewtwo in his hand, and I think there's a Landorus there too. I'm not sure. I see Scramble Switch, but he's got no energy on the board anyway, so. Yeah, and I guess he's just going to pass, so that'll come back to me. I do have a Deoxys in my hand, and a Snorlax. I think I have a Deoxys. Pretty sure. Don't know why I haven't dropped that bad boy down yet, but... Maybe I was seeing a Scramble Switch or something. I've got one Full Art Deoxys, and from this angle it does kind of look like a Scramble Switch. Um, I'm just thinking about how I want to go about this, if I want to keep the Bufalon out there and just get that out of the way, because that does really scare me. You might think the Bufalon's kind of gone out with all the, with the Verbank laser, because it, it goes against, uh, goes against Bufalon. I mean, because it, uh, goes against Boofer. His ability doesn't affect the poison damage. But he's still really, really strong. Um, uh, I think... Two out of the first three games that uh, Tommy played, and um, he played, I think, Plasma Basics in the first game. Uh, Bufalant took four prizes. He played Dark Rye in the second game. Bufalant took uh, three prizes, I think, a Sableye and a Dark Rye. And then in the third game, uh, Bufalant again um, took four against Plasma Basics. It's, I mean, it's a threat. You really have to. Uh, you really have to look out for that. So I Skyla for an N, which means my hand is not very good. I don't know why I was going to put that in the discard. I guess I was going to play it the same turn. I'll put down Snorlax. Oh, quick thing about Snorlax. Uh, Snorlax won me two or three games uh, this this tournament because uh, 
because of his his block ability. Um, once people run out of um, oh, that was don't know what I was doing there. But anyways, oh, I I uh, I played a switch and then I took it back. Sorry about the confusion. But yeah, so um, and then I passed. Uh, Snorlax's block ability. So I was I was going against Darkrai in my fourth game as Tommy plays a laser, and um, and I I needed a catcher to win the game with Lugia because I was going to catch her one of his Absols out and just basically win. And uh, and I top decked a Chorus, and all I needed was that one catcher, and I missed. I Chorused for eight, and I whiffed the catcher. So. But what I did hit was a Team Plasma Ball, and I had one slot left open on my bench. I put down Snorlax, I switched into him, and I played a laser, and I passed. Um, he didn't have anything to get out of his, um, didn't have anything to get out of his active Absol, so it just took damage, and on the next turn, I hit a Juniper, which I then Junipered that whole hand away, and I was able to get uh, two catchers. I had three left in the deck, and I whiffed off the chorus. Um, the same thing happened in in my last game. I played against uh, Garbodor, Landorus, and Mewtwo. Yeah, um, I was able to stall with Snorlax for a turn while I got my uh, Deoxys ready to uh, catch her out uh, their Mewtwo, which had a DCE on it. And I just needed one. Um, I needed one uh, Plasma Energy, and I was able to waste that turn away so I could get the Plasma Energy. So. What Tommy does is he uh, switches into Tornadus, and he um, he switches into Tornadus, and he does blow through for 30, and uh, then poison. So yeah, that that's a 40. I play Keldeo. I rush in with Keldeo, and then I switch back out just to get rid of the poison off of the active uh, Chiram, and then I play an N. So. We'll see what I can get off this end. I'm really hoping to get a Thunderous and at least a couple Deoxys out, because I've not hit a single Deoxys. And it, and it really scares me that even though Deoxys' attack is way better than Mewtwo's, um, if your opponent gets uh, gets their Mewtwo's active first and start putting energy on them, they can just catch out your Deoxys and just go away with them. I've, I've seen uh, many people... Um, underestimate the power of Mewtwo now. Uh, they think their Deoxys is just way better and really that Mewtwo, it it still goes pretty strong. So I I guess I did have a scramble switch before when I played that M that wasn't a Deoxys, but there is my full art Deoxys. And that is great to have on the bench. I if I get a Verbank and a laser off this uh no I can't. I'll still be ten short. So, I think I'm going to Team Plasma Ball for another Deoxys, so that I can... Or maybe Thunderous. I guess I'm going for Thunderous because I didn't have the laser. That must have been what it was. But, uh, yeah. I'm going to go for that Thunderous, maybe put an energy on it, just get ready. Because the active Chiram does have uh, 60 damage on it. So, there is a very large possibility that it will get knocked out soon. There's a Mewtwo on the bench if he plays a DCE. Out of that Mewtwo, my Chiram's knocked out, and I'll need something to back it up. So I guess I'm putting down the Thunderous for that. And I think I'll probably use that Catcher. What am I going to catch her out? Uh, I was doing some math in my head before I decided on my Catcher. I might just go to get that Bufalon out. Just get that Bufalon out of the way. He did play Max Potion on it earlier. I'm very jealous of his uh, shiny Max Potion. The only shiny card in my... Uh, the only shiny or full art uh, non-Pokemon I have in my deck is... I have a shiny Ultra Ball and a full art Chorus. The least expensive out of all of the supporters. <laughs> I pulled it in my Plasma Storm box. But yeah, taking a lot of time thinking about what I'm going to do. And I will catch her... I'll get the Mewtwo out there, maybe put some damage on it so that next turn I can come in. And I play the laser, so I did have the laser. Uh, just make him have more cards to knock me out. Uh, that's basically the thing right now, is that he'll need a switch now, and uh, he'll need another energy. Uh, just trying to make it as hard as possible for him to knock out my Chiron. 
and it's Tommy's turn. He has the sleep flip, sleep check, and I believe he stays asleep. That is, that is huge. That is a very big flip in the game right now. Um, he plays Getsis. I have Chorus and a Bianca, so he has. He uh, doesn't get anything out of that. That's a wasted supporter. But I really do love uh, Getsis. It has times where it really shines, and it has times where it really fails. And I think that uh, I think that it's it's a very risky card, but it can definitely uh, it can definitely come in handy. And Tommy will catch her out, my Keldeo, and pass to basically do the same thing I did last turn, where he's just trying to make me have more cards in order to knock uh, his Mewtwo out. I don't believe I have. Oh, I have a chorus. Very nice chorus. I was gonna say I don't believe I have a switch in hand, so that was a good play. I will chorus now for seven. Hopefully getting a float stone or a switch. Uh, ideally, I think right now I would want a uh, float stone and a catcher. Maybe float stone, catcher, laser. <laughs> I mean, ideally, uh, float stone, catcher, laser, Verbank, because uh, right now that Mewtwo, it has only uh, 10, I believe. Yes, it has only. No, it has uh, 20 HP left, so. I would uh, catch her out the other Mewtwo maybe, uh, make him wait even longer to get a switch, and then I would just frost beer. Well, there's the Verbank. If I get the catcher, then it's ideal. And then I would I would uh, get the knockout on the benched Mewtwo, and put 30 on the uh, uh, put 30 and 30 from the laser on the active Mewtwo. But um, yeah, uh, I don't think I got a float stone or a switch, so I think that Keldeo might be stuck there active and yeah he is uh... that'll uh... the verbank will knock out the uh... the mewtwo though so getting a two prize lead so far see that he draws a float stone he does have a fighting energy in the hand so if he plays if he plays that fighting energy and he plays a uh... plays a catcher he can knock out my Chiron with all that energy and uh, Normally what you want to do against your opponent, unless they have something special, is to uh, catch her out their Pokemon that they're building up with all their energy on, and take that energy off the board so they can't move it around, can't use it with other stuff. Usually that's the smartest play, but there are instances where there's other stuff. And yes, um, I guess I should have said this at the beginning, but I have been playing competitive since... November? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I've been collecting the cards since I was really little. Um, but yeah, I have been only playing competitive uh, Pokemon since November. I did have a Deoxys right there, and I chose to put down the Chiram because I do feel the active Chiram is about to be knocked out um, at some point. And the fact that he played a Landorus is definitely making me want to... Uh, power up a second Kyrim so I can get the knockout on that Landorus even if the first one goes down because Landorus are a real hindrance to the rest of this deck they can they can definitely spread damage and the uh, uh, the double the times two weakness on the Thunderous is, is is definitely a problem but yes so back to my I will play scramble switch okay I know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna scramble switch to the Kyrim Watch, because I said that, that's not going to be what I actually did. That was a great... I don't think I top-decked that Scala. That Scala was from last turn. But, uh, yeah. Scramble switch with the Kyrim, and I will get the two-prize knockout here with the uh, second attack of Kyrim, which does 120, but you cannot attack the next turn. Which is why a float stone on him is really nice. I mean, if you have a float stone on your Keldeo, then it really doesn't matter, because you can rush in with Keldeo, and then float stone back to Kyrim and just do it again. But I think I'm, I'm just kind of mulling it over right now, and just kind of deciding on, uh, on if there's any other viable plays at this point, and I end up uh, choosing not to. So, there's the blow-through for the knockout. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to promote something else. That was a pretty quick uh, thing by him. I do have the double weakness with, um, with, uh, Thunderous. So if I can somehow get a double colorless or a, 
which I do think I have the double colorless in my hand. So that means next turn I should, if he's not able to knock me out, next turn I should be able to win by catching out that uh, Tornadus and uh, putting a wall up on it with uh, Thunderous's uh, second attack. I will, I will power up the Chirum though, just to make sure, just to make sure no uh, no foolins go on, and I'll pass and hope that he doesn't switch. Oh, and there he goes. He switches. I do believe I have a catcher in my hand though, so I don't think he realizes that. And I do have the catcher, and there we go. That is the game. And uh, yeah. Um, Plasma Basics is definitely a top archetype right now. It is a very, very strong deck. But this is not a proper uh, representation um, of, of Tommy's deck. It is actually very strong, too. And, uh, yeah, um, I will have some uh, some other games of coming up soon. Uh, he plays Darkrai, and his Darkrai is very good, and I will play against Darkrai. And, uh, yeah, uh, should be some good games. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.